everyone to tradingpub.com. This is uh, Morgan Busby. I'll be uh, hosting today's event. We appreciate you guys being here. This is absolutely our most popular class that we host. It's a half-day trading class. We had one last month that was outstanding. And uh, based on the speakers that are lined up for today, I think that this one will be just as good, if not better. So you guys are definitely in for a treat. Just to tell you a little bit about Trading Pub, basically our mission is to work with top traders uh, from around the globe, providing free education uh, in the markets, whether it's stocks, futures, options, or Forex. Uh, real quick, if you can, type in the market you primarily trade. So again, let's, let's kind of see what kind of traders we have in the room. Type in the market you primarily trade. We've got stocks, ES, stocks, equities, NASDAQ, Euro, USD, futures, S&P, options, options, uh, ETFs, Forex, options, 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 futures, good deal. Okay, got a great crowd. It's fun seeing, uh, seeing that typing go by so fast. So uh, again, I appreciate you being here. It looks like we're coming up on uh, about 1,000 people, and so it's going to be a great class. Uh, our first speaker today uh, is a great partner of Trading Pub, uh, is Metastock, and I know a lot of you guys have probably uh, been familiar with Metastock. Hopefully, you've used it before. If you haven't used it, you know uh, we'll we'll get you guys a free trial offer. But um, we appreciate you guys being here, Dave. Uh, can, real quick, um, does everybody see Dave's screen? I just want to make sure you guys can see that. All right, good deal. Well, we're going to play just a quick video. It's about a one-minute uh, one minute video, tell you a little bit about Trading Pub, then we're going to turn things over to Dave. Good deal, good deal. Well, we've got a great crowd today. Dave, I appreciate you being here. Uh, Dave's going to talk to you guys about three simple steps to a successful trade. Uh, basically, what we'll do is we'll put a timer up at the top of the screen. That way that you guys can keep track of it. Dave can keep track of his time. Uh, each speaker is going to go for about 50 minutes. Uh, you know, there's over a thousand people in the room. I know that he's going to do his best to get your questions answered. Dave, maybe let him know if you if you prefer questions throughout the presentation or at the end. Uh, that would probably be helpful. But again, we'll do our best for you. And Dave, you can go ahead and take it away. All right, thanks so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, we love being in the trading pub. And uh, just wanted to start to answer, answer that question there. If it comes to questions, um, perhaps it would be best if we wait till the end. If you do have something relevant, go ahead and throw it out there. I'm going to probably, uh, I'm going to try to keep up with your questions. And maybe, Morgan, if you see something that you think is very relevant, you can interrupt me and let me know that there was a question there. All right. Well, uh, again, my name is Dave Osmond. Been with Metastock for a long time, and uh, we've been friends with the Trading Pub for a while now. And we love your group. 
We think you do some terrific things, and uh, I know you, you've probably got a handful of Metastock users in the room here. So uh, for some of you, this some of the things I'm presenting here might look a little familiar. For those of you who do not have familiarity with Metastock, I'm excited to show it to you. Okay? All right, and uh, and I, ha I guess I have to tackle this question because it, it, I can never it, I can never uh, get away from it. Uh, yes, Donny Osmond is my uncle. My dad is his older brother. So Donny and Maria are uncle and aunt. <laughs> so let's get that out of the way. There's no getting away from it when you've got the uh, dark hair and the big front uh, front teeth there. So <laughs> actually, I got my my trading start uh, with the family. The Osmonds are actually, aside from being very good musicians and entertainers, they are uh, some pretty savvy investors. And I've got a couple of uncles who uh, got me started when I was just a boy. In fact, my, my uncle Jimmy, who's a really just fantastic investor, I've learned a lot from him over the years. He, um, <clears throat> I was playing around at his home when I was just a boy, and we were playing hide and seek, just a short story here. And um, in the intake for his air conditioning system, I actually unscrewed it and walked, you know, crawled into the little intake. Yes, that's right, long-haired lover from Liverpool, Jimmy. Well, he had apparently forgotten that he'd stashed away several ingots of silver in his um, air conditioning. <laughs> and I stumbled onto them and pulled them out. And uh, he gave me one. And I got a nice start, actually, uh, with precious metals when I was just a boy. <laughs> so just a fun little story. Let's get started. Uh, let me go ahead and read down our standard disclosure first. This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock software and accompanying plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell exchange-traded instruments, rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Thomson Reuters shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software any trading strategies or any information provided in connection with the company. Okay. Let me give you a tiny bit of background here on Metastock. We've been around a very long time. We're almost older than Microsoft. When it comes to software companies, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who's been around as long as we are. That means a few things. It means you've got some serious stability out of our company. Um, we've had users of our software who've been with us for many, many years, you know, 30 years from the beginning. And uh, they know we're going to be here 30 years from now uh, supporting our products. And so there's a great uh, deal of confidence you get by being a Metastock customer. Uh, Reuters purchased us in 1995. Uh, we started providing real-time data and news services that came from the Reuters community. And we've sold more than 300,000 units over that period of time. We're pretty proud of that. What I'm going to do today is give you just a tiny overview of Metastock. We don't have the time to go into all the bells and whistles of a Metastock. Uh, there are and there are considerable amount. Uh, we will go in on a very specific trading system called the RMO. What I'm not going to be able to go into is how we do our scans, a lot of our explorations and explorers and ex expert advisors, our back testing, which is second to none. We're not going to be able to get into a lot of that. And I know some of you are curious about some of those things. Unfortunately, you'll have to tune in for a different Metastock webinar someday to get a little more background on some of those tools. Uh, let me just blow our horn here for just a moment. For 21 years in a row, we just got voted once again uh, the best charting platform available to the retail trader. So we're very excited about that. There's a lot of fun things. Let me give you a little background on the RMO system, what it is. It's uh, based on the work of Rahul Mohindar, who is one of our partners in India. He's a very seasoned trader and a panelist out there for a lot of the financial uh, news networks there in India. He um, he came up with a great system, uh, one that's have been very very popular out there. We uh, asked him if we could have it and put it into the latest version of Metastock for our users, and he agreed. He went ahead and gave it to us. So this is a system that is exclusively available within Metastock, and over the last couple of years has become a tremendously um, widely used system. Uh, probably the most used system for Metastock users. I use it myself in my own trading, and these are the reasons why I like it. Number one, it's very easy to use. Okay, uh, I think that there's a lot of systems out there, a lot of great ways to get very complicated in your trading. Trading, and I, I'm, uh, I, per, 
prefer to keep things on the more simpler side. Um, and that's what this does, I think, beautifully, in fact. It's not subjective. It has a very um, defined set of rules to follow. So it gives you good uh, rules-based logic. It employs good money management techniques, too, as far as setting stops, uh, taking your wins. And you can translate that into either a very conservative approach or there are some you know, higher risks approach with that. We'll go into that. It works on virtually any time frame. Uh, so this is not just for you position traders. Uh, this will work great for you day traders as well. It also works on a lot of different instruments. So we're not just talking about equities. We're talking about uh, this will work great for ETFs. It works great for Forex pairs, futures. Uh, there's really nothing you, you wouldn't be able to use this on. It's not going to work for everything. It's not 100% accurate, as everybody knows. There are no systems like that, but it's awfully good on a lot of different instruments on a lot of different time frames. <coughs> Excuse me. It follows a very simple three-step process. So we're going to go into that. Right now we're looking at Metastock, and I'm just going to jump right into it with you guys, okay? Uh, and start using some examples. Now, when you go into Metastock and you're opening up a chart, and let's just start with that. It's really simple. You just go ahead and type in whatever symbol. Let's start with something we're all pretty familiar with. Start with Apple. And when you're in Metastock, there's a lot of different tools and um, charting options and, and systems that you can go ahead and plot onto your chart. It automatically defaults to the some bars with a um, volume indicator here. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll just right click on it and apply a template. The RMO is part of Metastock. It's nothing extra within the Metastock program. It's a preset layout or template rather uh, of indicators. And let me go ahead and go through these indicators one by one. Okay. Let's start right now with the price bars. Uh, we can go ahead and change these to candlesticks if it's all right. If that's what you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it as bars for now. Uh, let me go ahead and ex exit this one out for now. That's more of a real-time trading thing. We'll come back to that in a moment if we have the time. So we'll keep it on a daily time frame for now. So this is the RMO system. I'm going to go through and explain it bit by bit. You've got some buy and sell arrows in there, but these buy and sell arrows require some translation first. We have to get confirmation. Okay. And if you have Metastock right now, either version 11 or 12, you have this system. Okay, and it will be listed in your templates. So let's go through this, the three-step process, and I'm going to simplify it by just starting with this top oscillating indicator. So this is the oscillator itself, and when we're dealing with an oscillator, we're really looking for a yes or no statement. We're looking for a positive or negative statement, and in that case, we're looking for something. I'll use my drawing tools here in Metastock. In that case, what we're dealing with is either above the zero line or below the zero line. That's pretty simple to translate, is it not? <laughs> so if we're above the zero line, we would consider that a bullish territory. If we're down here, we'd consider that bearish. And that's pretty simple to see. That's pretty easy. That's step number one, okay? Pretty easy to translate. So all we're looking for and all we care about is number one, are we above the zero line for a bullish move or are we below the zero line for a bearish move? So if we're looking to go long, we have to have step one above zero. If that's the case, then we have step one of our three criteria for taking that trade long. Okay. Now, if we're looking for a short trade, the opposite is true. If we're looking to go short, then the green histogram must be below the zero line. Okay, that's step number one. Go ahead and put the others back up. Now, step number two is this second indicator, which he calls the swing trade two and three couple of histograms laid on top of each other. Now, please don't be um, um, 
misled here by the term swing trade two and three. It has nothing to do with actually swing trading. It's just what he calls it. So this is not exclusively something that would be a swing trade type of indicator. Now, similarly to the first histogram with the oscillator, we're looking for something here. And actually what I'm going to do, this is a great feature in Metastock. I can actually select a histogram and change it uh, to a line study. And I'm going to do that for now because I think when you first learn this system, it actually is pretty helpful to uh, use it as a line study. So now we're looking at that same chart uh, in a line study. And we're going to look for some relationships between these swing trade two and three for our second confirmation of either going long or short. We'll go ahead and highlight the zero line once again. So similarly to the last one we just had, we're looking for this pink line to be up in either bullish territory bearish territory. This pink line, swing trade two, is made up of roughly about 40 different indicators in the background. There's a lot of math going on behind the scenes. But essentially what you could call this is the short-term trend. This short-term trend, as you can see, is much more volatile. It's bumping around a lot, whipsawing back and forth. Now, all we're looking for with step number two is in it is it in a bullish zone, which it would be right here, because it's above the zero line, or is it in a bearish zone, as it is down here? Can everybody see that? That makes pretty much sense. I mean, it's very easy. Uh, that's a really good question. I always get that question about the MACD averages. It's um, There's a lot more math in it <laughs> than simply the MACD averages. It's a closed system, you know, it's something that he protects very carefully, but there's, I've seen the, uh, the back end coding for this thing, and there's a ton of math going on. <laughs> but it's, there's some similarities there, and I think it's easier to think about it after that. <coughs> and we'll definitely pull some of your own symbols, folks, uh, things that you would like to analyze using this system here once we get through some of the initial steps for it. So that's step two. So let's go ahead and go back. So or originally, we would need to be in a bullish zone if we're going to go long. And that's a great question, Haytham. It doesn't matter. The difference in the depth of the zone is very, very clear. It has to either be above or below. Okay? Good. Good question. Now, if you're going to translate that a little later on, I'll talk about how there's higher risk ways to, to approach this. Um, but we'll look at that. So. Let's go back again to this second one for our term number three, okay? Number three is now no longer, we're not looking for a bullish or bearish region. What we are looking for is we're looking for a crossover point between this blue line, swing trade three, which is really kind of a median type trend, and when it crosses over into this short term trend, excuse me, I have a little cold, and so I apologize if I sound just a little bit, a uh, little coughing here, here and there. I'll try and catch it with the mute button if I can. So what we're looking for are these crossover points, and you can see them all over. What uh, Rahul calls these are major shifts in momentum when we're seeing these two cross. And this is that third indication, okay? That third indication tells us if we're going to be able to go long or short. So if we have a crossover either above or below, then we can take that long or we can take that short position. And this is actually triggered with an arrow. All right, and so if we go into the price bars themselves, I'm going to just zero in here on the recent because the system actually gave a really great bearish call on Apple um, back in uh, October. And you can see here, that this red arrow went ahead and indicated that we had a crossover point. Let me just highlight that so you can see it better. We had this crossover point up top. And that crossing over point said, hey, we have a major shift in momentum. Uh, something has changed and it's headed bearish and it's headed there fast. So that's what calls us to, a, to that attention in the first place. So we check the other two conditions and see what we have. Well, guess what? We got a bearish signal because it's crossing below 
However, just like the question mentioned earlier, well, how bearish does it have to be in the oscillator up here? And how bearish it does it have to be in the pink? It just has to be essentially below that line. Were we there at that point? We were not. So when this red arrow generated, I'll just put this line right here to show. When this red arrow generated a sell or bearish signal, we needed to confirm it with the other two. And sure enough, we look up and we see we are not bearish in the top, in the oscillator. We are still above the zero line. Now it's headed that direction, but we're not there. The pink line also headed sharply in that direction, but did it cross the zero? It did not. And so what we do in this case is we wait. <laughs> And this is what I love about the system is it teaches you good patience. And it's a very conservative system at the start. And when you start following it by the rules, you'll find that it's incredibly conservative. Uh, and once you learn these rules, you can play with that conservatism a little bit, and I'll show you how to do that. I do that myself now. <coughs> I have to be conservative, though. I have seven children at home, so I don't day trade myself. I'm, I use this exclusively for my some of the positions that I take. Um, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> hey, we're the Osmond family, right? We gotta, we gotta continue to do what we do here in Salt Lake City. <laughs> it's great, though. <laughs> I'm very, very happy. I love my kiddos. Um, lost my track there. Sorry. So we're looking here at this. Um, we, we're gonna wait on this a few bars. Now these are daily bars, okay? And so we're watching them go, and sure enough, we've gotten a good indication that we ought to be watching this. We ought to be taking care of it and saying, okay, we've got this bullish signal, and certainly the oscillator is headed into that territory, and the, the pink short-term indicator is also going in that direction. But we don't actually take this trade until they're both showing that. Okay, So you're starting to see some of the conservatism uh, that has a part of this system. So quite literally, we don't take this trade until right here. We don't take this short position uh, at all. And you're right. And so we're missing tons of this move, right? Well, if you're looking at it from the rules point, <laughs> there is no trade. There is no move. Uh, if you're strictly following it by the rules and you're a conservative trader, you're not following, you're not missing any of these days of moves. You, you missed technically about two weeks, right? And so the date we took that trade was on the, uh, looks like, let me just put, hover over that on the 19th, my dad's, my dad's birthday. So that's when we would have taken that, that short position, okay? All right. So technically, yeah, did we miss two weeks of that move? Well, you could say that looking in retrospect, but remember we're reading the chart from, a, from the right side, and we're looking backwards in time. So it's easy to say that. But when you're following the rules of the system, and what I love about it is that there isn't a move yet. There is no buy signal, there is no sell signal until we have all three conditions set. And you can see when we do have all three conditions set, we get some really good trades out of it. Um, you can walk out of there with a lot of positive trades. So we would have taken that trade right here with Apple. All right? Pretty easy to translate. We, we know when we're taking it. So when do we get out of this position? Well, we're going to keep watching it for these conditions to stay the same. Okay? So we have it now. Look at this. We got a crossover point right here. And this generated a blue arrow down below. That blue arrow typically means a buy condition, right? <coughs> and, and let me just review. It looks like some of you have a little com confusion on what one, two, three are. One is, number one, your oscillator at the top has to be either above or below the zero line. Above for a bullish move, below for a bearish. Number two, this pink swing trade two needs to be either above the zero line or below the zero line. That's condition number two, above for bearish, below for bullish. Okay. And number three are these crossover points between the medium term trend and the short term trend. And these crossover points are number three, and those actually trigger, trigger a buy. So Rick says, hey, this is a buy right here. So Rick says we get an, and sure enough we're getting a blue arrow. So is it a buy according to the rules? Actually, it's not. It's not yet. So we're watching this develop. It crossed over, but why is it not a buy? 
because our oscillator is still in a bearish zone and our short-term trend is still bearish. Now the short term is definitely headed up that direction. It crossed over. That's why we got the blue arrow that says, hey, we might have a buy position. But we're going to ignore it because we don't have all three conditions for a long trade. Okay? We're going to go through a whole bunch more of different charts with these guys. I just want to make sure you have the rules here. Absolutely. So the reason we would wait is we would develop to see if this green histogram ever went up. And you know what? It never did. It never went to the top. And it kept us from getting whipsawed out. And this is the, probably the strength of the RMO system, is that it does a great job smoothing things out. Let's look at some other uh, symbols. Okay? This, this really has helped me over the years to, to avoid the whipsaws that can happen. Let's go ahead and close that out. And why don't we select, OK, let's start grabbing some, TGT. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so here's target. Let me get rid of this here. Let's look at what it's doing right now. Let's go to the hard right edge. Okay. Let me just go ahead and circle in on here. So it looks like we triggered ourselves a pretty good looking buy signal. It happened right here. And let's check if we get one, two, three conditions associated with that. And sure enough, the oscillator is above zero. The pink is above zero. We have long, long. Do we have a crossover? We do. That's what generated the, the arrow. So we have one, two, three. So back on um, the fifth, the RMO generated a buy on target, and it's telling it to keep to keep holding your buy position right now. Okay. Barry, uh, the, the moving averages, there are about 40 or 50 different indicators that go into this, and it's actually a closed code, so I, I don't know exactly uh, what those parameters are. Okay? I wish I knew. I think we can guess that there's definitely some averages going on in there. But there's an enormous amount of math going on in the background. All right, let's look at something else. Can you all see, can you all see why this is a buy signal here, though? It's very easy to look at. One, two, three. Let's look at gold. Hope the continuous contract on this. Okay, let me get rid of target. Let's take a look at it. Gold, let me zero in because it looks like we got a good strong long position here. Right there, it triggered but it wasn't ready. You can already tell. Uh, let me just kind of grow that up for you a little bit. You can tell here that it wasn't ready uh, because it was got a red bar here. That's a little indicator that it wasn't quite ready. Okay. And so here we have a wait one day before we find the conditions right. And sure enough, the day after on a daily chart, we did go into that bearish or I'm sorry, bullish area. Okay, and we can go ahead and you know see right there that we've got the same thing in this territory here. Okay, exit signals. We're going to talk about those in just a second uh, when we go into some of the shorter time frames. Okay, let's look at DDD. Actually, let's look at oil while we're still looking at contracts here. <coughs> Excuse me. This one. Okay, let's look at oil. Go ahead and apply my template. Okay. Oil, same type of movement actually we just saw. On the far right edge, I love looking at what it's telling me right now. Okay. Right now, on a daily chart, we did get a red arrow, and that was generated because we had a crossover point. That's condition one, right? Now, conditions two for a short trade are not looking good. We're really still bullish in that long prevailing trend in the short term trend. So we would have to wait to see how this developed. Okay. Now, some of you are starting to see where you could translate this into maybe a little more risky uh, system, maybe a little less conservative. 
is maybe a better <laughs> way to determine that. For example, you know, getting into these trades, I actually have a lot of customers who use this on a regular basis and simply trade the actual arrow itself. Okay? And so not even considering any of the other aspects. It's just saying, hey, just take the arrows. That's pretty risky, obviously, but it does get you in on these moves a lot faster. I think the from a conservative standpoint, one of the beautiful things about this system is that it keeps you from whipsawing. Okay? And they can. A lagging or a leading indicator like this, you know, they, they could work against you. You have to be very careful, obviously, with any trading system. But this thing has actually generated some pretty awesome signals. Okay? All right, let's look at it on a real-time basis. Let's go ahead and pull up an equity right now. And let's look at things on an, on, the, on a real-time basis. Now, one thing that I want to show you while I'm doing this, let me go ahead and get rid of all of these charts back away. Within Metastock, you have access to an enormous amount of data off of pretty much any world exchange because it's coming in from the, um, the Reuters feeds. And so pretty much whatever it is you'd like to look at, we can look at uh, from really any market out there. But in Metastock, you can just simply type in a symbol, click Next, and it'll go ahead and open up that for you. Okay, so here's 3D systems. Someone was just asking for And I want to look back here because it's actually been really a bullish uh, equity here. This has been a very, very bullish thing. And back in 2012, in the early part of, uh, of the year, in January, it went from a bullish or bearish mode up here to a very bullish, and it stayed in there. And frankly, if you're using this system last year, it would have indicated you to get into this trade here. A couple days later, it went into that territory, and then you'd still be holding this trade. So you would have actually gotten in at uh, what about 14, 15, and uh, you'd still be holding on to this trade right now. Okay, according to this system. Yeah, pretty nice trade. I'd be happy with that trade too. Now, let me go over this because I think this is an important money management um, aspect of this that I like a lot. This trade that we took, according to Rahul, any time that you get a blue arrow going forward, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to buy more. In fact, when I take a trade, it's rare that I actually take more going into that trade. Maybe on this equity I do because it's just got such a great long-term bullish run. Um, but anytime Rahul says you're taking a trade, he says, okay, we're going to set a common sense stop first. And when you get into that trade, depending on what your temperance is, there's a lot of different translations of where that stock should go. Okay? Jess wants to look at this in candlesticks, absolutely. Very easy to do in Metastock. There you go. Metastock is incredibly uh, customizable. There are more tools within Metastock than you will ever use. <laughs> but that's great because we all trade differently. I trade differently than you do. And uh, because of that, you can make Metastock your own. Okay? So let's look at this. We've got this. I'm going to use this line here to say that this is my stop. And let's say I got into this trade around here and I said, all right, I'm not going to let myself get any lower than than the, uh, the previous high of, of the previous day, okay? Well, that's fine. I've set my stop. Well, stops are only good if you, if you stick to them. Now, one thing that we do here with the RMO is Rahul says anytime you get a blue arrow, that means what did we get? We got another crossover. We had a crossover point. We can ignore this red arrow because it crossed down. However, we know that the oscillator is still bullish on both the green and the pink. So we're going to hang in there. We're going to stick with that trade. And sure enough, well, look at that. Day. It whipsawed back, back up. And it said, you know what? Crossed over again. We're still bullish. It doesn't mean we're going to buy more. What it means is we're going to take our stop. We're going to go ahead and move it up. We have a new level. Sure enough, we're going along. We're really happy with this trade because the blue and, blue and, and, uh, and red arrows are, are coming in and they're whipsawing, but they're getting us back into it and we're getting great motion and sticking in our trade because we have this really great prevailing trend that stays bullish at the top 
and so we can hang in. Absolutely, Holly. If you missed your entry, and how many times do we miss an entry? We always do, right? Because we're always searching through the markets looking for this. For example, we're going to do a scan here in a moment. I'm going to scan through the broad market looking for anything with a blue arrow. Okay? And so let's say we, we missed this trade initially. Guess what? This is now your entry point for you. And for me, if I got into this trade, this is where I'm tightening up my stop. Okay? So we're going forward. We're really happy with this trade with 3D. Um, and sure enough, it happens again. We can ignore that red arrow because we're staying bullish at the top. We can just hang in there. Happens again. We're going to tighten up that stop. And this happens over and over. Uh, in fact, we end up getting stopped out of this trade right about here when we get that little red arrow. Uh, because, that, no, we actually hang in there and we get stopped out right on, looks about the 26th point. And we, we're okay. We're going to take it and we say, all right, you know what? This thing dropped down below my stop. I'm going to get a, go ahead and exit this trade. And you know what? About four or five days later, it set up a pretty good buy again. And we went ahead and took a new position because we got stopped out. We made some serious points on that first trade. The second one, guess what? We are doing exactly the same thing. We're tightening up our stop, tightening up our stop all the way till we actually probably wouldn't have stopped out, right? Well, our last stop would have been here, so we wouldn't have been stopped out until the bars actually went into bearish zone. So we went ahead and grabbed a whole bunch of other points right there. All right. I'm just going through simulation. If you're following these to the T, we would have gotten out. We would have gotten back in. So three positions this would have generated over the entire year. All of them, we would have gained between 15 and 20 points each time. All right. Let's look at this on a short term frame, okay? Uh, because, boy, we are blowing through time really fast. All right, so let's go ahead and, and in Metastock, we do that by simply clicking down here on this little D where selected daily. We could do this on weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, of course. Let's go ahead and do it on a 10-minute chart and see what it says here. Of course, markets are closed, so we're looking at the last 10-minute intervals of the open market, okay? So here we are now. The bars are representing or the candlesticks are representing 10-minute periods from the last couple of trading days. All the rules are the same. We're still looking at that oscillator. We're still looking for bearish and bullish zones and having the one, two, three. We're going to look at a forex pair in here in just a moment, Charles. Uh, <coughs> we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at that. Because it works great. Actually, the euro dollar, I think, performs very, very well uh, with this system. So let's look back and see what we have here. It looks like this thing has been staying very pretty active and bullish as we'd expect. This particular equity has been very bullish for us. Uh, and so let's say we ended up getting into a position here at this blue arrow. We had all the conditions right for it. One, two, three were met. And we went ahead and ra just ran with that. We set ourselves a good stop. And we go ahead and run with this and sure enough we got a couple of 10 minute bars here that told us we were going to exit but we're not. Okay. Simply because our conditions are still bullish. So even though it's trying to whipsaw, we're going to ignore that. And here, look at this. Beautiful another signal comes back in and says, hey, tighten up your stop. It looks like we did get stopped out towards the end of the day. But that's a pretty good position. We went in at uh, 65. We got stopped out here at 67. Okay. Yeah, in fact, um, Chris, great question. There is an alert. You can set it to really any sound you want, and it pops up on your screen. You can actually have that alert sent out to your um, your uh, mail if you've got Outlook. Um, yeah, it looks like you've got there's there's a bunch of Metastock users in here, <laughs> and uh, I love it. You guys know where, where I'm going with this. Metastock has some awesome scanning capability, and so we're going to do that. I promise we'd look at a forex pair uh, before we run out of time. So let's go ahead and just look at the euro dollar. In Metastock, we just type in EUR equals. Looks like I've got my volume chart in here. Somebody's been messing with my charts. It's not my usual computer. And so we'll go ahead and just we'll try that again. 
Let's drop that down. Oops. Go ahead and get rid of that. Let's try that one more time. In fact, if you wanted to, you guys, you can go down here to the bottom, and this will pull up all your Forex pairs. For those of you who do not have Metastock 12 yet, those of you who are still writing on Metastock 11, we just came out with 12, and it's been a hugely popular program across the board. I highly suggest it. Uh, we can upgrade you for some discounted prices right now for those of you who don't have the 12 version, but it's just so much easier to use. Okay. Yes, in fact, that's one of the big changes in Metastock 12. You now have volume on Forex. So the 12 version is pretty awesome. Uh, for those of you who don't have it yet, I would go out there and, and get your hands on it. But yeah, you can see all the different pairs that are available to you here. You know, we can, we can pretty much uh, use just about whatever you'd like. We'll go ahead and try that again and see if I can get it to pull up. Eh, it doesn't want to because somebody's messed up this chart trying to set up a MACV on it who doesn't know how to use my program. Let me just go ahead and just remove it for you while I'm working on it. Sorry, guys. This is what I get for using a, a different computer today. What we'll do is I'm just going to go ahead and use a different pair. We have any Aussies in the house? We could use the, uh, the Australian dollar euro. Let's see what that looks like. So on a, and let's use it, of course, in a different time frame. Let's do it on a, a 30 minute chart. So Eduardo wants to know how we can have volume in a Forex market if it's not a centralized market. Well, that's a very good question. It's the reason why we didn't have it before. Um, it's not a centralized market, so you're dealing with uh, contributing banks. And Reuters, uh, Thomson Reuters is one of the largest financial reporting industries or institutions in the world. And there, yeah, exactly. There are more than 800 banks online, and so you're dealing with contributions from banks all over the world. In fact, for you forex gurus and you guys who love uh, the forex market, there is a tool now in the 12 version that we don't have time to look at, but it'll go ahead and show you individual banks what their projections are. So you can actually pull up Barclays and find out what their projection is for the euro dollar for the next six months. And what they feel like it's going to do, and what other, you know, the other 700, 800 banks are, are feeling, and they kind of put that all together into a projection chart. It's pretty amazing. A lot of the tools that you get with Metastock now are, you know, parts of tools that have been developed for the institutional grade traders, brokers, and and the hedge fund managers who pay thousands and thousands of dollars for these tools. Well, because we're a Reuters company. We have access to this for our retail trailers at significantly less cost. Okay, so you definitely check into it. We're going to give you an opportunity. I'm showing you here on the screen the alert, so that uh, so that you can uh, actually see what those look like. There's that alert. Okay. All right, and it doesn't want to use this particular chart, uh, the the forex euro dollar right now. So. It doesn't work on every instrument, you know, but I'm telling you, it, it will work on enough that I think you'll be impressed. Okay, let's go ahead. I want to do a couple of things here for you. Let me just go ahead and clean off this chart. Let's go ahead and, as I promised, I would like to show you um, some of the scanning capability for the RMO. So in Metastock 12, we go to this power console. Instead of going with the charting tab, we're going to go ahead and select this Explorer tab. And down at the bottom, as you can see here, this whole list allows you to go through and scan the broad markets trying to find really just buy and sell opportunities based on different types of systems. And we do have lots of these RMO. And what I like to look for is this swing trade buy arrow. So that blue arrow, we can go ahead and select Next. And let's go ahead and run it on an index. Let's run it on the NASDAQ 100. I'll select all of those. And we will start the exploration. Now right now, it's searching through the NASDAQ 100. Okay. And Scott's question is very good. You can select multiple criteria for a scan on the Explorer. You can scan multiple systems over multiple instruments 
It's one of the great, I think, tools within Metastock. Okay. We pull that up, and sure enough, here you go. The Apollo Group, Adobe, Dollar, in, uh, Intuitive, Liberty, and Maxim are all showing this buy signal. Okay. Uh, yes, and you can actually create explorations pretty much on whatever criteria that you would like. All right. So let's go ahead and just open up Adobe. And according to this, we should be able to apply our template for the RMO. And we should be able to see a blue arrow that came in. And well, here's my alert telling me that. And sure enough, there is a blue arrow right there that I've scanned for. All three conditions are met. And so it's still saying we can go ahead and go forward with that. Uh, this actually triggered a pretty awesome buy, it looks like. I haven't been trading this particular instrument. However, it did trade. looks like we had all three conditions set on the next day. And we'd still be hanging in this trade, and we did, would have just tightened up our stop up here at this point. Okay. Does the blue and red arrow display at the end of the bar? Yes. Once the bar has completed, then the blue and red arrows will show. Okay. Uh, with Metastock, do you need data feed or using the end of day? Yeah, you do have to have a Metastock data feed to run Metastock. Either a real-time feed or the end of day. Mm -hmm. You can find optional stocks within the real-time version only. Okay, We're actually working on getting those optional stocks into the end of day feed as well. There are lots of tutorials on Metastock that we can set up. There are also custom time parameters, Judy that we can set up. Um, let me go ahead and pull AIG for you. There's so many questions. I apologize, guys, if I'm not getting to all of you. I'm going to try and get to as many as I can, OK? So here's AIG. Let's go ahead and apply our template. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, also, some really good-looking signals. Um, I know it looks like it works on everything, but um, it doesn't. Just keep that in mind. It's not going to work on every single thing out there, although these last ones that you had me pick look awfully good. Uh, AIG just recently showed, if you, didn't, if you weren't in it before, it's definitely showing a long position right now. Uh, it triggered a really good-looking position right there. And I hope that through this exercise today, my hope is that you can see how easy it is to quickly determine that you have the one, two, three conditions. Because look how fast you could just look at this and see. We have a crossover because it generated a buy signal. We have this in the, in the green zone above zero. And we have this above zero in the pink. Okay. RMO is not the only system in, the, in Metastock. It is one of probably 200 different trading systems and line studies. Uh, Metastock is going to have all of the classical indicators. You're looking at a drop-down menu of pretty much everything that's out there. Okay? You can also create and import your own systems into it. I actually, one thing I love to do, and I'm glad you brought this up, is I actually really like the MACD. The, the knock on a MACD for me has always been that it just whipsaws you all the time. It's very jumpy. And so I actually like to see a little confirmation, you know, with, with a MACD by throwing it in there. I can actually drop down a MACD and make it part of my chart. And I can throw in an expert advisor to translate it. And I could just go ahead and select a MACD off of this. I love Metastock. It's so easy to use. So now I'm looking at the RMO with the MACD. Uh, Alfonso, we don't have range, uh, or Don, we don't have range bars yet. That's coming in the, in the near future, though, uh, with the next update. Uh, that's a big one. That's one that I would love to have. Um, so now we're looking at MACD buy signals and sell signals on here. And I love laying this on top because I love to see where those positions say. If you can see here that the MACD went ahead and said sell. 
there's that classic MACD whipsaw <laughs> that always happens. Well, guess what? The RMO said, no, don't sell. Hang in there. The RMO is a much more smooth system. Uh, it's one of the reasons why it's so popular uh, and so well used. All right, we have time to just look at a couple more. I uh, appreciate your patience, everybody. Let's look at uh, ADX. RMO is not available for MT4. Uh, it is only available for uh, Metastock. Okay. Um, while I'm pulling up, uh, let's do PXD. Let me answer this question on support. I think it's really important. Let's see how we do. Support, you guys, is key to us. Remember, we're a 30-year-old software company. We don't hang around this long without taking care of our customer base. Our support is really well known uh, for giving great support if it's a four-minute phone call or if it's a four-hour phone call. The calls are live, and guess what? They're all done right here in Salt Lake City with everybody who speaks English. We have Spanish speaker. We actually have a couple who speak Japanese. Um, so support is a big deal to us. If you need the help, we're going to do that for you, and it's free to you for life. Those of you who own Metastock, you know about that. It's not 24-7. It is extended, though, for our international clients. We have extended it this year. And we're looking at hopefully adding that soon uh, because we're so global now. We have so many users around the country. Okay? All right. So let's look at this uh, Pioneer real quick. Boy, a great-looking signal here. It generated about a few weeks ago, three weeks ago. We got a nice signal right there. We verified that signal with our three conditions. Hey, look at that. Everything looks great for a long position. We would have taken that, and we'd just be holding it right now. And it doesn't look like it's going anywhere down at the moment. It looks very bullish right now, according to the RMO. Um, there's, there's lots of extra instruction that's available for the RMO. We have a lot of online help for you. Uh, we also have a lot of live help where we can get on there and help you with that. But I think what you'll find with the RMO is that it's very easy to use, it's very simple to translate, and it works great because it, I think it just works a great job as far as confirming itself. We're running very, very low on time, you guys. I really, really apologize. Uh, MS10 does have the RMO, 10, 11, and 12. Anything before that, you won't have it. It's not an extra cost. Um, but we want you to try it, okay? And I apologize, but that's the best I can do right now as far as looking at examples. Let me go ahead and pull up my um, PowerPoint one more time. So hopefully you can see this. Normally, if you're using Metastock to try it on a month-to-month -month basis, we charge $59 dollars. Um, for that, or we charge 235, actually two, between 235 and 250, depending on what you're using uh, for that. But we're going to give you a link here where everybody in the room, we're going to give you a free link. Okay, and here's the link: metastock.com/tradingpub. Pretty easy to get to. And here's the link on my screen as well. If you click on this link. Because you are a member of Trading Pub and you're in this presentation today, we'll give you a free 30 days of Metastock. And that'll be either the real-time version for you day traders or the end-of-day version for you position traders. Okay? We want you to try it. We want you to do a couple of things. We want you to test the systems. We want you to call in and test our support. I think you'll be incredibly surprised at how easy it is to get us on the phone. Yes, it works great with Forex. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to look at the Euro dollar. Um, I share this computer and somebody went in there and kind of messed up my Euro dollar charts. So um, we, we don't have any plans as far as you know melding into and becoming a part of other uh, technical analysis platforms. But we really want you to give this a try and put it to the test. If you're like most people, um, I think you're going to really like it. Uh, it's pretty efficient, and it's something that um, I think you're going to have a good time with. My contact information is on here, too. 
uh, I wouldn't mind if you just give me an email. I'm happy to interact with you one-on-one, -on -one, uh, happy to answer as many questions as I can, or you can just call us on our general sales line at 801-888-8500. Of course, you can just get me at dave.osmond at thomsonreuters.com. And uh, I'll be happy to work with you. We're just looking forward to giving you a chance to try it out and just see what everybody has been talking about with the RMO. All right? Hey, thanks for your time. I, I really appreciate it. We love this group so much. You have such great questions. You're clearly the, um, you know, a really understanding and a smart group of traders. Best of luck into everything that you're doing. And uh, we're looking forward to working with you. Thanks, everybody. All right, great. Thank you, Dave. And yeah, we thank the uh, 1,270 people here. So uh, at this time, we've, we're going to get things set for our next speaker. Uh, why don't we do this um, between speakers? John is uh, John Carter is next with SimplerOptions.com. He's going to talk about uh, elephant trades in the market. But uh, one thing, uh, just to answer some of the questions that came up, we are recording uh, today's events. Uh, we record each session and then we go and cut each one up separately so you can watch them as a separate video link. That way if you, you know, catch the first two sessions and miss the next ones, you know, you can know which ones to come back and, and which ones to focus on. But again, here's the link uh, that Dave offered, free 30-day trial of Metastock. You can choose either version. Uh, I'm going to put a one-minute timer up there, give you guys a second to take advantage of the trial, and then uh, during that time, John can go ahead and kind of get everything loaded on his end. So uh, we'll get that set. We'll do about a minute and 30 seconds, and then uh, John will turn things over to you. So, Dave, thanks again for being here, and we look forward to having you back very soon.